Are gay people really born that way? The brain the this guy's racist trained to himself. History. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Welcome to Boomer Watch, a show where we look at boomers and just be dumbfounded, laugh, or become terrified. It is important to remember that being a boomer doesn't imply a specific age. Boomer is a mindset. So I'm just getting that out of the way. The distinguishment between lowercase and capital B boomers. We are mostly looking at boomers who are centrists and conservatives in this series. Today, we are looking at Mr. Reagan. You can even believe it. The mastermind behind it all, Jank Uger of the Young Turks. Now this may all sound completely nuts, like a big conspiracy theory. So, how do you describe Mr. Reagan? He's like Alex Jones. But for terminally online boomers who don't want to admit they agree with Alex Jones. And he also really, really loves Ronald Reagan. I, I, I don't know if you could tell that. If you've seen one conservative YouTuber's arguments, you've definitely seen them all. The real kicker here is that he has nothing going on for him except a confirmation bias for his audience. That's it. His content is so lazy and so mediocre. Well, if you're trying to reduce crime, right, you- No, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? Why do boomers accept this? He's clearly unscripted. Have the same condition, but who claim to because they want to, or for, for some other reason. Unprepared. People and crime, which I was completely dismissing the brown people comment. And I think that this is an example of the problem. Unprofessional. AOC is why I now say, I think that the right-wing person prides himself or herself on pragmatism. And just regurgitating talking points he heard online or on Fox News. Speaking of douchey and evil, look at this guy. Look at him mansplaining all over the place. Disgusting. That's you men. That's all American men. Recently, his popularity has spiked due to getting a shout out by none other than Glenn Beck himself. With uh, Ocasio Cortez, and I don't know if you've seen the uh, the video by a, a new guy called Mr. Reagan online, but he did an expose on Cortez that's a little a little frightening on what's happening behind the scenes. This is for his video on AOC apparently being an actress and not a politician. Yeah, it confuses me too, but we'll get there, don't you worry. His talking points, as I said, are the same as every conservative. He tries his hardest to be clever, but unfortunately for him, he's not. For example, he did a whole video of him saying the Republican Party's history is racist, and then at the end did a switcheroo with the Republicans and Democrats. I think I forgot. Today's opposite day. Yeah. So everything I just said about the Democrats, that's that's actually the Republicans. As most people know, after the 60s, the parties changed sides. But you know, he doesn't care about after the 60s. Just forget the Southern strategy and all. You feel me? He also tries super hard to own some libs at a women's march. But again, he's not good at what he does. I, I feel that abortion should be legal and free for everyone to have if, if they need to have it. I'm also here for immigrant women. I'm here in support of women that are immigrants that are crossing the border right now, that are being pushed back and are being mistreated with their children. Illegal immigrants? I, I don't call them that. I'm not in support of the wall. I think it's a, a very useless way to protect the border. There are other ways to protect the border. So you think it's ineffective? Completely ineffective and outdated. Would you be for taking down the walls in prisons then? Because we typically use walls primarily to hold no, prisoners. No, two different things. Two different things. But those are effective. Uh, those are not walls. Those are prisons. He managed to cash in on the Gillette short film craze where he also displays his lack of understanding of film language and visuals. No, seriously though, bullying is really bad and mean. Okay, is this kid who's hugging his mom calling her a loser and saying everybody hates you? That's kind of mean, kid. I don't. And how do they not see these other kids running through their house? Do they just not care or... Which for a writer slash actor slash director is a pretty bad look for your cred there, bud. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Just look at his short... TV series. Oh, 
Oh, I know. The problem is I've already made a deal with your opponent, and you both can't win. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Okay, okay. Hillary, stop. So you're probably wondering why Satan is wandering around the mid-Wilshire district of Los Angeles. Well... Watch where you're going, bone hole. Bone hole. Bone hole. <laughs> it is fucking show. Hey, here. I saw what happened. What a jerk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Look, that's really not necessary. No, no, it's my pleasure. I mean, I just feel horrible <laughs> seeing... Women just throw themselves wow. at a Satan character. What is your shirt? Like, Satan <laughs> Don't I buy you breakfast? You're clearly having a bad morning, and I'm a big believer in karma. Yeah, there's no such thing as karma. What? This show is really inconsistent with its audio. Stay tuned. He doesn't fix it until episode three. But back to the ad. He just narrates over the whole thing, and it's so fucking boring and unfunny. How are people entertained by it? I think with his film skills, his lack of visual comprehension is genuine. We had to stage this because we couldn't find any archival footage of men harassing women, so we had to invent some. Women were never harassed on TV in the past. Well, here's a link below that there are very recent, uncritical examples of women being harassed on TV. But genuinely, is the lack of comprehension for the sake of being obtuse, or is it genuine idiocy? I seriously can't tell. No, for real, I can't. This is over 1 million views? What the fuck? This is the laziest content. Holy shit. This blew him up. What the fuck? How is this content? Who finds this fun? How is this even funny? Let's take a look at his comments. First, in the aforementioned Gillette parody, is our good buddy, Sargon of a God. Famously left-wing, Carl Benjamin, here agreeing with conservative internet pundits. I mean, what else is new? This isn't the only comments we'll talk about. Here's some from his video called Different Types of Democrats. You can really feel the boomer in these ones. I can't stand Hillary, Obama, Soros, Bush and... Bush and Cheney for 9-11? I'm also anti-feminist. I've known so very manipulative women in my life. They're freaking everywhere. Men watch your back, scold, making money grabbers. Don't care how they hurt or ruin your life. You have good cogent thoughts, but your videos are too long, so I stopped watching them. Hint, less than 12 minutes is good. Then I can watch five per hour. This sure is a lot of boomer brain rot. I won't watch one 30 minute video, but I will watch five 12 minute videos for an hour. Oh yeah, by the way, he's a huge homophobe. Shocking, I know. Don't believe me? Here's a video where he compares gay people to pedophiles and the mentally ill or physically contagious. Are gay people really born that way? What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious. A sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Holy shit, dude. Even most of the Republicans have moved on to targeting trans people. You're behind the eight ball on this one. Point. Certainly Elizabeth Warren has done this with her, you know, whole... I'm an Indian claim. Which, by the way, the whole Pocahontas thing, hilarious. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit, he's so smug with that one, he thinks he nailed it! I'm gonna fucking die. Humanity is supposed to be about loving people despite the fact that they might do something that you don't approve of or you think is sinful. So this wasn't very Christian-like of the Christians. That said, I, I don't necessarily think it was completely unprovoked. Anyways. Here's an attempt at comedy from him. Fair warning, this contains audio and footage of Nazis in an attempt to make a really dumb joke. Und das insbesondere keiner mehr dann in Deutschland leben wird. Yep. 
that's the whole joke. Nothing insightful, nothing witty, nothing of anything really. She's just doing a classic Warren milk toast take on how America needs to move to a German social market economy, which is certainly, definitely the same as Hitler. The right is starting to get better at comedy, and it's making the leftists nervous. Here's a video that's full of projection. Why the left will always be wrong. And to just have this very simplistic view of, you know, I'm good, these people are bad, you know, you know, which the left kind of does with like their victim classes and their oppressor classes. Um, that's a great, it's a, so much fun to think that way. Yep. Called it. Called it. Called it. Who called it? Who called it? I called it. Yeah. He was like a leftist romantic, right? He had these ideas. He had this idea of utopia, right? Same with Karl Marx. No, Reagan. You're a romantic. I'm gonna call you Farah. Farah. But I'm June. Nope. You. That was really fucking dumb. This video is mostly buzzwords of logic and reason and reality, but no substance or anything. Let's watch this clip that really showcases it. From different kinds of groups that aren't traditionally considered conservative are joining the conservative party because of rationalism. Rationalism? <laughs> I didn't know conservatives were big fans of Spinoza and Descartes. Both American parties are based on the pretense of liberalism and empiricism, so this is pretty funny. It goes against the way he presents himself, but in reality, it's what he's actually believing in by asserting without evidence. It's some funny shit. Now to the main event. His 2 million view video on AOC being an actress. He, he does realize he named himself after, right? She defers completely to her team. This is a serious claim, I know, but consider the following evidence. This is a video of Corbin Trent, one of Alexandria's top advisors, speaking with Zach Alexi, the Sololinsky style strategy expert who organized much of AOC's campaign. Corbin Trent is now Alexandria's top congressional aide. They make up 40%. Uh, well, people that make uh, no. 19999 dollars a year or less. So people that make $20,000 a year or less uh, make up right around 30, 40% uh, of Americans, right? So it's 40% of Americans make less, less than 20,000. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like 60 million people make less than, th than $20,000 a year. 200 million Americans make less than $20,000 a year. That's 40% of this country. These guys are coaching her. They're scripting everything she says. I will give credit where credit is due. He is right about how politics are mostly just about appearances. What he forgets to say is that this is all of politics, not just the Justice Democrats. There are always people doing work behind the scenes, like your crappy cameraman. Oh, for fuck's, for fuck's sake, just keep, keep, keep the camera in focus. Keep the camera in focus. Fucking hell, it's not that hard. Put it down if you can't do it. Back to behind the scenes, we have the issue of what information she's being fed. I'd, I'd like to add that um, you know there is a. Um... There is a, um, a certain website that's also, I think it's also in cahoots with um, AOC and SAG Axley and the AOC campaign. It's um, it's the Daily Caller. They also <laughs> report on this. <laughs> a casting call. They had a casting call. They cast Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the role of Congresswoman. And they did this so they could promote their own agenda. The overall point of a grassroots campaign is that every candidate must be in a collective agreement on policies. Why would a progressive campaign recruit a libertarian that supports flat tax rate? Or a conservative that supports giving tax cuts to the rich? Or any candidates that don't even support Medicare for all? The man who hired him to head up the Justice Democrats will horrify you, if you can even believe it. The mastermind behind it all, Jank Uger of the Young Turks. Now this may all sound completely nuts, like a big conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, holy shit. He thinks Shank Uger is the fucking mastermind behind the new wave of democratic politics. Like he's pulling all the strings. <laughs> Back to the casting call thing Mr. Reagan mentioned. Because a candidate was interviewed by an organization and suggested to an organization, doesn't make her an actress or undoes her political activist past, especially in her work with the Bernie campaign. Speaking of Bernie. Geniuses. 
he brought in the top guys from the Bernie campaign. The Bernie campaign was unprecedented in their grassroots success. They were brilliant. I actually did a lot of research on this and the keys to their success are equal parts nefarious and creepy. Why is this clip included? Why does this clip even happen? I, I don't understand. Anyways, it should be obvious by now that there are so many holes in the worldview Mr. Reagan provides that people will want answers. A classic tactic of conspiracy shows is to create fear and outrage, which will lead to further questioning, further fear, and further outrage. His viewers will want answers, and we have an idea of what those answers might be. In his older content, Mr. Reagan has a more familiar right-wing YouTube style, not directly aimed at boomers. In one of his videos, a compilation of how various online creators got red-pilled, he features some familiar faces. Blonde in the belly of the beast and Brief a show. I've talked before about Brief a show and her transition to being a full alt-right YouTuber, but if you weren't aware, she does make a series called This Week in Alt-Right. She's a Nazi, pretty much. Which has me questioning things. Like, holy shit. Like, why does he have the fucking echoes around his livestream title and thumbnails for his streams? Holy shit, this puts a whole fucking new spin on the Bernie being nefarious comment. Mr. Reagan does not answer these questions outside of personal anecdotes. And you have to wonder why. Is he really that much of a buffoon? Or is it a tactic meant to incite fear? The fearful mind is one that's open to extreme solutions and Christopher Patrick Coles might have an answer deep within his content. Sorry for getting serious there at the end, but uh, thank you for watching. I'd like to shout out to all my patrons on the list, especially patrons in the past who have left because of my hiatus. Um, I'm really sorry. I'm hopefully back now. Um, please uh, donate to my Patreon if you can. A dollar helps. Any amount of money helps. Uh, there's also... Um, my Twitter, you can follow me at an actual joke. I'll just subscribe, an actual joke, click the bell, and, uh, hopefully I'll see you within the next week for a new video. Thanks. Bye-bye.